All right, there we go. So hi everyone and thank you again for joining us today. So some of you may already be very familiar with ORCID or you may have never heard of ORCID, uh, but either way, um, ORCID is increasingly used by researchers and research organizations, publishers and funders from all over the globe. And so we're here with you today. We're gonna talk about ORCID. So we're gonna make sure that everybody knows what ORCID is, and that will include an explanation of the ORCID ID and the ORCID record. We'll also uh, share with you how ORCID can benefit your organization and how ORCID works for your researchers. And then Jamie will wrap up by talking specifically about how ORCID works in the Proposal Central platform. So let's get started and talk about what is ORCID. So ORCID stands for Open Researcher and Contributor Identifier. And the goal of ORCID is to uniquely identify researchers so that they can get credit and attribution for their work while also allowing the organizations that they're affiliated with to connect with their researchers and streamline the process of tracking and sharing information about researchers and their affiliations and activities. ORCID is a nonprofit, community driven organization that serves the entire global research community. And ORCID provides researchers with what we call an ORCID ID. So, an ORCID ID is a unique 16 digit number and that is unique to each person regardless of any changes in their name over time and anyone can get their own ORCID ID for free and so this is an example of what an ORCID ID looks like and in this example um, this ORCID ID belongs to our volunteer researcher for today Sophia and you'll notice that the ORCID ID looks like a link and that's because it is. So ORCID IDs link to what we call ORCID records. So if we were to click on Sophia's ORCID ID, we are taken to her ORCID record, which is populated with information about her similar to what you might see on a CV or resume. So we can see that she has some biography information, employment information, her education and qualification background, and then along the left side, you can see that she has some other personal details, other names that she may have gone by or published under um, websites and social media links, her country, other identifiers that she might have in other platforms, and her email address. If we scroll down on the ORCID record, we can see more information. So she has some memberships and service listed. She also has some funding that she's received there and some research resources that she has used. And then finally, scrolling further down, last but not least, she has some of her works and publications that have resulted from her research listed on her ORCID record here. Um, so that's just kind of the basic overview of the ORCID ID and the ORCID record and what that looks like. When it comes to the benefits of ORCID for organizations, and today we're talking about funding organizations in particular, um, basically ORCID makes it easier for funders to assess your awarding network and your influence based on your relationships with your affiliated researchers and their research. So basically the, the, the research that you have funded and ORCID makes it easier for funding organizations to evaluate your grant and program outputs and impact. And ORCID does this by providing a way for funders to uniquely identify your researchers and stay connected with your alumni over time. And also, ORCID provides a way for funders to streamline the collection of data about your researchers and their activities to kind of help gauge return on investment. And ORCID also allows funders to confirm relationships with researchers in the wider research landscape. So we'll go into each one of these points in a little bit more detail here. So at the most basic level, that ORCID ID number distinguishes researchers from each other and allows 
funding organizations to uniquely identify your researchers, regardless of whether multiple people share the same name or have changed names or used different names over the course of their career. So for example, with our volunteer, Sofia Maria Hernandez Garcia, there are a lot of different ways that she maybe could have you know, written her name or, or used her name on, on different publications and grant applications. Um, and, you know, when we're looking at just these different name variations, though, it's kind of impossible to tell if all of these names are referring to the same person or are these different people. Names alone, we have no way of knowing, uh, you know, who these names belong to in terms of linking them to an actual person. But with ORCID, um, well, again, uh, you know, there could be multiple people that respond to the name Sophia Garcia, for example. So with ORCID, that ORCID ID is unique. So we can better distinguish the actual individual that we're looking for, Sophia Maria Hernandez Garcia here. Uh, we can act actively distinguish her and her works and activities from other individuals. So the ORCID ID really lays the foundation for being able to more accurately evaluate your programs and the impact of your programs and return on investment based on the individual researchers that are affiliated with your organization and their activities and outputs both during the time that they're working with you and after their grant has, has ended. Um, just a little bit more background on the ORCID ID and, and kind of how it's being used across the globe. Um, we found that more researchers in various disciplines and all over the globe are using their ORCID ID to assert their online identity more than any other type of identifier. So the chart that you're seeing on the screen here illustrates that about 70% of researchers across various disciplines worldwide are using their ORCID ID to distinguish themselves. Um, and so just a little explanation of the chart, the blue square represents ORCID ID. Um, the, uh, along the bottom, that represents the different disciplines that were looked at in this uh, survey. And then you can see that going along the vertical axis, it looks like about 70% of researchers are using ORCID ID. And then there's other types of identifiers that are out there, but ORCID is really kind of leading the way in terms of what's actually being used. Um, these figures are from a recent study that was done by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development on charting the digital transformation of science. And uh, that, that study was based on a survey of, uh, I think about, uh, several thousand researchers all over the globe in different disciplines. And that also found that researchers that have a persistent trusted digital identity, um, that can really have an impact on the way that researchers are evaluated. So if you can, you know, confirm someone's identity from uh, materials that they have online, and especially the ORCID ID, that can really um, influence how that person's research is evaluated um, and how the researchers are evaluated themselves. And also, one of the other conclusions was that stronger digital identity leads to more research engagement. So things like collaborations and publications and funded projects. And really the bottom line here is that if you can verify and confirm who someone is, and see uh, how active they've been in their area of study and you know, their maybe employment history and educational background and other works and funding that they've been involved in, you'll probably feel more comfortable working with and investing in that person to advance research. So, um, so ORCID is really leading the way. There are currently over 9 million, I think they're getting close to 10 million ORCID IDs um, for researchers all over the globe. Um, ORCID is also not only used by researchers, um, there are organizations all over the research landscape um, and the platforms um, that funders use for evaluation that are using ORCID. So ORCID basically provides a shared consistent way to identify and distinguish people across organizations and platforms. Um, 
So organizations are increasingly using ORCID to identify and connect with their researchers. These are just a few of the organizations that might uh, be familiar to you that are using ORCID in their workflows. So from um, the publishing sector, uh, major funders, um, and uh, funding databases, and also employers, so especially universities and research institutions are also um, using ORCID. I think at this point there are over 1100 organizations and that number is always growing. So these are just a few examples. Um, and when you think about the wider landscape of activities that a researcher is involved in, they get employed, say at a university or agency or other type of institution, they get funding to work on their specific research, they do that research, they publish their results, and then they have to report on their activities, usually back to their employer, but also reporting back on those progress reports to the funding organizations. And these relationships, I mean, this, this diagram is very simplistic, but we know that these relationships and the reporting aspect can get more and more complicated as researchers are working with more and more organizations. And for you as a funding organization, you know, this can get more and more complex as you work with more researchers. Um, so when researchers have their ORCID ID, these, uh, these reporting uh, workflows can get a lot more um, streamlined. Um, and so when researchers have their ORCID ID and have information populated in their ORCID record, these organizations that the researcher is working with can use and pull that information from the researcher's ORCID record directly. Um, so basically in this graphic, you can see the researcher at the center with their ORCID ID and their ORCID record, the organizations that the researcher is affiliated with um, can connect with each individual researcher through their ORCID ID to get information about the researcher. But also these organizations can add authoritative information to the researcher's ORCID ID for them. Um, and the idea is that the researcher or the organizations that they're affiliated with can populate information in their ORCID record once, and then the data from their ORCID record can be reused when the researchers have to provide that information to other organizations. So that's where this phrase, enter once, reuse, often comes into play. And ORCID really benefits everyone when it's used consistently across the ecosystem. And because it is increasingly widely used and interoperable across various systems, you can use ORCID to streamline the collection of data about your researchers and their activities to more easily gauge your return on investment. So in order to get an idea of the impact of, that your funding is having, you need to be able to collect information, as you know, about your researchers and their activities. And ORCID allows researchers to easily store and share this information about themselves with the organizations that they work with. So this diagram is basically showing information from the ORCID record being transferred over to funding systems. Um, so then, uh, in order to connect with your researcher's ORCID ID and ORCID data, basically uh, ORCID has a technical infrastructure piece called the ORCID API, which stands for Application Programming Interface. And uh, that can be used in your local system so that your researchers can connect their ORCID ID with your organization, which makes your organization a trusted party on your researcher's ORCID records. Um, the ORCID API is already built into Proposal Central. Um, so you, if you know, you're using Proposal Central, you can go ahead and take advantage of this connection. And uh, basically, if your organization is not an ORCID member, the researcher would be connecting with Proposal Central as a trusted organization, as you see here. Um, but there is also an option for your organization to become an ORCID member. And when you do that, the researcher can actually connect um, with your organization directly through Proposal Central as a trusted party. So in this example, 
American Heart Association is an ORCID member. They are also using Proposal Central, so their researchers can designate American Heart Association as a trusted organization through the Proposal Central platform. And once your researchers have connected their ORCID ID and have either Proposal Central or your organization listed as a trusted party on their ORCID record, that's when you can get data about your researchers directly from their ORCID record, rather than asking your researchers to manually fill out forms when they're doing their reporting. So in Proposal Central, this is especially helpful in the progress reports where your researchers have to identify the publications and other outputs that are resulting from their funding. So with the ORCID connection, researchers can actually just very quickly select from a list of publications that are stored in their ORCID record to indicate which items are related to the grant. And they can just click a button to have that information imported from their ORCID record, which makes the process easier and ensures that data consistency. Um, and Jamie will go into a little bit more depth with this when, when he talks about the details of ORCID within Proposal Central. And just a little side note here that um, I know that many funders are very interested in being able to track specifically what publications and other outputs have come from specific grants. And so ORCID is kind of in the process of adding some more fields to the ORCID record to help with this specific linking, um, linking publications to specific funding. And there are now um, new uh, DOI identifiers through CrossRap for specific grants that can be tied to publications. And then publication identifiers can be tied to grant identifiers. So these persistent identifiers are a really good way to link all of this information together. And ORCID comes into play to identify the researcher in all of this linking. Um, and I know that I think Welcome Trust so far is uh, one of the big funders that's kind of leading the way in starting to use these new identifiers for specific grant awards. Um, so once a researcher has connected their ORCID ID with Proposal Central, um, you can stay connected with them as a trusted organization for up to 20 years after the initial connection was made. Um, so ORCID data can be used to show what awardees have accomplished in their career and where their funding figured into that. So what you're seeing on the screen here is um, the uh, researcher career dashboard from within Proposal Central that can be accessed. And the information on this little dashboard um, is reflecting data from the individual's ORCID record. So you can see when your organization provided funding to that individual and any subsequent funding represented by the blue bars and publication activity represented by the green line. Um, and all of this information is coming from ORCID. So you can kind of see where your funding might have had an impact on researchers' careers. Um, and I do want to mention that, you know, one of the big uh, things that's drawing a lot of attention to ORCID right now is the NIH and NSF um, also taking advantage of this kind of streamlined data transfer in their biosketch tool, which is called ScienceCV. And with ScienceCV, uh, researchers, as long as they have data populated in their ORCID record, they can basically transfer that data to Science CV by just clicking a button rather than manually retyping all of their information. Um, so this is just another example. Proposal Central basically does the same thing, um, but this approach is increasingly used by all of the different stakeholder organizations in the research landscape. Um, so universities are adopting this, um, funders are increasingly adopting this as well, um, publishers, many publishers require an ORCID ID, um, I know NIH, CDC um, require ORCID IDs for certain types of grants, so this, is, this practice is really growing. So knowing that multiple organizations are using ORCID as kind of a shared method to streamline this data collection, it might also be very helpful for you to know that as an organization, 
um, once you're designated as a, a trusted organization by your researchers, which they can do through Proposal Central, as an organization, you can also write information to your researchers' ORCID records so that the relationship between your organization and the researcher is clear, authoritative, and subsequently available to other uh, organizations in the research ecosystem that are also pulling data from ORCID. So, uh, so when you write your funding award information to your researchers' ORCID records, and then let's say your researchers go and apply for NIH funding, NIH pulls data from ORCID so they can see that you know, your researchers indeed have that relationship with you. Um, so basically, uh, Proposal Central does allow you to do this, and Jamie will talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Um, I'll show just a quick example. Um, this is a researcher down at the bottom here that received funding from the Children's Tumor Foundation. And so the organization has actually um, added that funding information to the person's ORCID record and asserted that relationship. Um, and you can see here that the source of that funding information in ORCID is the name of um, the funding organization. So in doing this, the organization is confirming that the researcher is indeed affiliated with them by way of funding. And just another little side note about NIH, they're also working on enabling this for their researchers, so they will soon also be writing funding information to ORCID records. Um, and so as a consumer of ORCID data, it's nice to know that the information on your researchers' ORCID records is accurate and verified by the organizations. Um, and we can do that by looking at the source of the data there. So basically, the more organizations that add information to researchers' ORCID records, the more authoritative and trustworthy that data within ORCID is when it gets imported into other systems. Um, I'm going to wrap up by covering a brief overview of how ORCID works for researchers. Um, I think this will be of interest to you because we have to make sure that our researchers have information in their ORCID records in order for you as funders to, to get that information from ORCID. So, um, we're kind of relying on researchers to also do their part in this kind of ORCID ecosystem. Um, so your researchers do need to have their own ORCID IDs and have information populated in their ORCID records in order for everyone to really benefit from that. So just a quick overview of how this works for the individuals. Basically anyone can register for their own ORCID ID for free at orchid.org slash register. And that process takes about 30 seconds. It's, it's a basic registration form, like what you're seeing here, that really just requires a name, an email address, and a password. Um, and getting that ORCID number is just the first step. Researchers do need to have at least some of their information populated in their ORCID records so that Proposal Central can access that information in a streamlined way that we just described. Um, something else to note about uh, the ORCID record for researchers is that they do have full control over the visibility of all of the data on their ORCID record. So as you see highlighted here, for each piece of information on the ORCID record, the researcher can choose for that information to be visible to everyone publicly on the web, private only to them, or visible only to trusted parties. So once your researchers connect their ORCID ID, in Proposal Central, Proposal Central will be a trusted party. Or if your organization is an ORCID member, your organization will be listed as that trusted party. So when it comes to both your organization and your researchers benefiting from ORCID, the more information your researchers have in their ORCID records, the more everyone will benefit. And the ORCID record provides space to include biographical information, employment and education information, memberships and service, invited positions and distinctions, past funding, um, works. Works can be anything from publications to presentations or data sets, you know, any kind of output there. Um, additionally, people can have information about any peer review activity that they've done and also research resources that they have used. Um, and so to add this information as an individual researcher, 
Um, it's pretty straightforward, but for the works and funding sections in particular, um, things can get a little more complicated. So ORCID actually does have some built-in tools to help researchers quickly populate this information rather than having to sit there and type everything in manually. Um, so I do wanna just let you know that both the works and the funding sections of ORCID have what we call search and link wizards available for the researchers. And these are basically databases of publication and funding through which the researcher can search for their name or other information and select items from a list to be added directly to their ORCID record. Um, for works, there are several databases available. Um, I'll show you a, a, a sample in just a minute. And for funding, the dimensions wizard right now is, is currently the only source. Um, but this can make things a little bit easier and quicker for, for researchers to get their ORCID records set up. So all of the search and link wizards basically work um, in the same way. Um, I will highlight here that uh, this cross-ref metadata search and also the one right below it, the data site um, database, these two are the main organizations that create DOIs for publications. Um, so if researchers have any publications that have DOIs, they'll, they should be able to find them in one of these two databases. And both of these are set up so that once a researcher connects with them, um, and then in the future, if they publish using their ORCID ID, their publications can get automatically added to their ORCID record for them. So using this cross-ref metadata search as an example, basically if the researcher clicks on that, they will authorize Crossref to have access to their ORCID record, which basically authorizes Crossref as a trusted party, another trusted party um, on their ORCID record. Um, they will be taken to the Crossref metadata search, which will automatically start to search for publications um, using their name. And so the researcher can basically go in and select which items are theirs, have that added to their ORCID record, so they click on that button, and then that, that work will appear there. So there are some um, you know, little tricks and tips here that, that can be helpful to researchers. And one of the things that we have available through the ORCID US community are things like um, video tutorials, um, written tutorials, and like email templates and whatnot to help get the word out to researchers that these tools are available to them. Um, so, you know, the, for the funding section, that dimensions wizard, it basically works the exact same way as what we just saw with Crossref. It's basically a database where the researcher can search for their past funding based on their name or their um, uh, grant title or keywords and have that information just added to their ORCID record for them without having to type it all in themselves. Um, so in addition to researchers being able to add information to their ORCID record through those search and link wizards, additionally, ORCID member organizations all over the globe are also adding relevant information to ORCID records as trusted organizations. So it really is an ecosystem that both researchers and organizations are participating in. Here you can see, um, I just have a few examples of various organizations adding information to people's ORCID records in different sections. So employment is typically a big one for universities to add that information, as well as the education uh, information that you're seeing here, uh, membership and service. And again, these are just um, some few examples, there are, there are actually a lot of organizations adding this kind of information to ORCID as well. Um, really the thing to remember here is that the more people and organizations that are participating, the more everyone can benefit from having consistent, trustworthy data that can be shared across platforms and save time for everyone. Um, I do want to mention that we, you know, we have the ORCID US Community Consortium and it basically is a growing community of practice in the U.S. for any nonprofit organizations that want to take advantage of ORCID. Um, right now we have 145 members. Mostly those are universities, but we do have um, research institutes. We have a number of funders 
um, many of, of whom are using Proposal Central. Um, we also have health and hospital systems and other research related groups involved in our uh, consortium. So we're all kind of in this together and looking to all work together and share best practices and resources for getting the message out to encourage researchers to get their ORCID ID and populate their ORCID records so that as organizations, we can all benefit. Um, so if your organization is interested in becoming an ORCID member and connecting with your researchers directly, um, we do have an annual membership fee that's $4,800 per calendar year. Um, I will, uh, when I hand it over to Jamie, I will share some links in our chat um, to point you towards more resources. And we, we do have kind of a new blog page that describes some of the, the difference between being an ORCID member or not being an ORCID member, but using Proposal Central and kind of the difference between the two um, and what benefits you could get as an ORCID member. So I'll share that link in just a minute. And of course, um, I will also share my email address. I'm available for any specific questions about the context of your organization and how ORCID might work for you. Um, I do want to just make sure that everybody knows since Proposal Central is also an ORCID member, you don't have to become an ORCID member yourself to, to take advantage of the ORCID functionality that Proposal Central provides. Um, but there are a few additional benefits that you will get if you do, uh, if your organization does become an ORCID member. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Jamie now to talk a little bit more about the specifics of ORCID within the Proposal Central platform. Thank you, Sheila, and welcome everybody. Uh, this is, as Sheila said, the third webinar that we've done for funders, but we've also done three webinars, four webinars now for uh, researchers individually. And what I've found is that it's easier for you to understand how ORCID works in the context of Proposal Central when you understand how it works for the researchers. So I find that it's very helpful to get that background for Sheila about how the researchers get the content in there that you're gonna use in Proposal Central to start understanding impact. And uh, so I'm gonna run through a presentation that shows how we integrated uh, ORCID into Proposal Central for the researcher and for you. So um, here's the couple of topics I'm gonna to go through just a real quick. Uh, what's the level of adoption of ORCID in Proposal Central? Where do we integrate it in the workflow? And then the steps that you can take to do this. And as Sheila said, you don't have to become a member of ORCID to take advantage of the things that we've built into Proposal Central with this ORCID integration. There are some additional benefits you get if you're a member. I'll try to point those specific points out in my presentation about uh, where those happen in Proposal Central uh, so that it's clear to you what those are. And then uh, Sheila's posting the link to the blog that we put together to help answer that question because we get a lot of questions for people. You know, what's the difference if I become a member? So follow her link and you'll be able to get to that kind of uh, that detail. And, uh, and we'll send follow-up after this that's, uh, that's got all that information and links uh, in, in the follow-up email. So, you know, uh, you're attending, you're interested in ORCID, you might be wondering, am I the only one who else has joined in in this ORCID thing as funders, right? So, yeah, we've all heard NIH is, uh, is doing the ORCID thing. They've been requiring ORCID IDs in K awards. Uh, so career development awards since uh, October last year, but they're really far behind where we've gotten with Proposal Central and the funders in Proposal Central. So last year, um, 52 funders require applicants to have ORCID IDs. And so we're approaching right now about 60% of the applicants. I think by the end of the year, we're gonna be well into the 70% range of applicants that had an ORCID ID. And uh, so uh, I, I bring this point up so that if you're wondering, should I require ORCID ID on my applications, you should, and it's easy. And it's been proven by the funders ahead of time. And then what I'm gonna show in the presentation is how you use that connection. So 
what we're trying to point out in this is it's not just the identifier. The identifier is an important thing, but it's not the only piece. So what do I mean by that, right? So the identifier uh, will uh, help eliminate, as Sheila showed you, really in good illustrations, how to identify the person. So if you're running a search in PubMed for your researcher and you have all of these names that look the same, how do you know this is my awardee? Well, ORCID lets us do that. And, and not just in PubMed, but also in Crossref and a lot of other sources about publications, we're seeing it explode into other areas. So Dimensions has it where you're looking at grant award data. Uh, data site is, do, is managing data deposits and presentations and things like that. And they have ORCID integrated. So lots of places uh, in, in research systems that are tracking ORCID ID now that allows you to identify your awardee in those systems. Uh, but because it's more than ID, what do I mean by that? So what we've heard a lot of funders say to us uh, is, I work with this awardee for a year or three years, five years during the length of their grant award, maybe for a year or two after that, then I lose contact with what they've been publishing, what they're doing, did they stay in the field, what was their impact? And so what the ORCID connection gives us, not the ID, but the actual connection in ORCID is the ability after the close of that grant at any time to go back and look at that researcher and say, what did they accomplish after the grant that we gave them? And so here you can see what that looks like. So this is the career dashboard that you can access in Proposal Central from your um, grant award page. You can also see this uh, for applicants that have connected their um, ORCID ID in the application process. If you click on their name, you're gonna get this dashboard and below this in Proposal Central is a list of the most recent publications or most recent funding. And so the light blue bar shows the first grant that you gave to that researcher. And then the green uh, line graph shows the number of publications they've done after that. The dark blue bars are other funding they've gotten from other funders and the light blue bars that follow are uh, additional funding that you might have given them. So we're using the data in Proposal Central combined with the data from ORCID to give you this picture of what your researchers accomplished uh, before and after the grant that you gave them. We can combine that data. Uh, so we've got this uh, dashboarding tool called ClickSense that's available to any of the funders. It's a separate optional thing, but we basically take all that data, aggregate it together, put that initial award that you gave them at time zero, and then we look at the sum of data across a whole bunch of researchers, let's say all the researchers in an early career grant program to see what has been the impact collectively of that program and the money you gave, that's the blue bar is the money you gave to them getting additional funding and publishing, right? So we're able to pull that data together and aggregate that. Now I can tell you this picture is misleading because the actual amount of publication data that they've done afterwards is and probably the funding is way higher than this. We know that because we know that some of the researchers haven't put their content yet in Proposal Central, right? So some have really robust profiles and others have nothing. Part of our having this outreach to you is how do you integrate ORCID into the process? And can you work with us to help encourage your researchers to add content? Because then we can give you uh, more complete, more accurate data about impact on careers. The other piece that Sheila mentioned, so this is career, this is person oriented and program and the impact that those programs have on the careers of uh, your researchers. This uh, second illustration here is our new analytical tool. We have it in beta right now with a couple of clients that we're uh, going to be releasing this towards the end of uh, December. So going into next year, you may be starting to look at this and you can see the little green and red lines. Those green and red lines are the connections between a grant, the dark teal that you gave a researcher, the publications that they reported in that grant, and then the connection between that publication and other publications that cited them. So you can come all the way out to a future article that's written by some new discovery and link that back to the award that you gave through these connections. And we're using ORCID to make it easy for the researchers to tell you what the publications were that were that, uh, that came as a result of the grant that you gave them. 
And then we're able to, through the citation data to then tie that uh, those publications from your grant to other publications to follow the path of discovery. And um, in databases like Crossref, where they have a lot of ORCID identity data, that is they have the ORCID ID for each of the authors, we're mining that data so that we can go back to the PIs and have them add that data to their profile, to their work and record, to the grant report, right? So to be able to make more of those links in there. So that work and ID is the essential way where we establish these linkages in all this data to help you visualize on a timeline where your awards fit into the impact of, uh, of new discoveries. So that's why we're talking about ORCA. We're not talking about it because it's an identifier. We're talking about it because it's the kind of thing that will allow you to answer common types of questions that we hear that you're wrestling with. So how do we get to there, right? So how do we get to there is how have we integrated ORCA into the, the workflow and how do we how do we get all that data available to you? So I'm gonna real quickly go through connect that is how does the researcher connect uh, their ORCID id and proposal central how do they pull that data from their ORCID record into their profile and proposal central use that then in applications and progress reports and then to finish up the path here how you're able to push award data back into their record so real quickly it's easy right a uh, new user comes to proposal central if they want to register and get a user account they can use their ORCID record this populates their user account, it connects their ORCID record and it allows them to load the data from ORCID directly into their Proposal Central profile. So really speeding up the process for uh, a new user to register. If they already have a profile in Proposal Central, very simple, right on the profile, they click the connect button that links their ORCID ID to, this, to their profile in Proposal Central and gives them the opportunity to load all of their data uh, into the ORCID record, data like publications and other support and degrees and things like that, right? Um, so the other place where they can connect, right, is directly in your application. So during the application process on the PI page or on the key personnel page, there's a function there that allows them to do the link without ever leaving the application. So if they didn't do it in their profile, Here's another place where they could do it. The really cool thing about this in the application is, uh, if for example, this one we're showing is for the American Heart Association, we know they're a member of ORCID, so we can, at the same time that they're connecting their ORCID ID, enable this researcher to directly trust the American Heart Association. The American Heart Association has publications that they uh, that they put out there. They have. Um, a professional art daily membership and and so we're able to use that same orchid uh, uh, data and connection with them and the other kinds of systems and processes so the proposal central thing free to you right you know you can connect this you don't have to be a member they trust the platform at this process but if you're a member the additional thing that can happen here is they can trust you directly that shows up in their record. You can use that with other systems that you have uh, in your internal enterprise. So um, the next place where the uh, applicants or awardees can connect the researchers, they can do this in a deliverable. So we've set it up so that if you have annual reporting deliverables, like a progress report, Right? You could just put this on here. If your awardee doesn't already have their ORCID ID connected, you know, during the annual progress reporting time, they could just click this link and authorize step here. And again, because this is a deliverable, they're interacting with you. If you're a member, this is the point where they could also trust you directly as a member, in addition to Proposal Central as the platform. Okay, so. What about peer reviewers? So uh, in the process of doing peer review, we've got this uh, confidentiality screen where you can show them uh, your policies and guidelines on here and they can assign that. There's also an option to enable this for your researchers to, uh, who are peer reviewers to connect their ORCID ID. And uh, if they've already done this, if they've been an applicant or a prior awardee and connected it during that process, it'll just show their ID here and they just keep on going. But gives them the opportunity here right in the peer review committee process to, uh, to connect their ID. And we'll be adding the peer review push 
the beginning of next year, right? So we're in the development process for that right now. What we'll do, like we do for awardees, is enable you to push the service that your peer reviewers are doing to their uh, profile. Very important to them in terms of uh, career progression. So um, once the uh, applicant awardee reviewer has connected their ORCID ID in Proposal Central, then they're also able to use their ORCID credentials to log into Proposal Central. So it's just another step that we took to kind of make this easy. Remember fewer passwords, right? It's something that's a benefit to the researcher directly. Uh, once they've connected their ORCID ID to this, we've, they've trusted the platform, Proposal Central, and possibly you directly. So what that gives us is access to the data that's stored in their uh, ORCID record, and it depends on the settings that they've put in there. So as long as they've said that the information about, let's say, publications and other funding are available to trusted parties, we can go pull that into their Proposal Central profile for them, make it available in applications and in uh, progress reports, right? So we are doing this for them automatically. So once they connect their ORCID record here, they don't have to think about going, going in and updating this profile. We have a process that's running behind the scenes, it's going through all of the researchers that have connected their ID and given that trusted relationship, and we're going out and extracting the data for them. They can also come in here and manually update or sync the ORCID data to their profile. But the automation piece ensures we don't miss anything uh, you know, going into the future. So, once we have this data available for the researcher, when you give them an annual progress report, then uh, in this section of the web form in that annual progress report, there's a section you can turn on for publications. And it collects a lot of detailed data. An example would be the title, the journal it's published in, the year that it was published, uh, and the date, and, and, uh, and things like the PubMed ID or the DOI. So if we get researchers typing that data and we get a lot of bad data, when we pull this directly and they just select those uh, from the data that we pull from ORCA, we get very good, clear, consistent data uh, that gives us the links into that analytical platform. It is also much easier than for the, for the, uh, for the awardee than to just pick their latest publications off of this list when they're doing the uh, grant progress report. So, I would encourage you if you don't already have this turned in and or turned on in your progress report to, to select the publications, now would be a good time to talk to your support rep about how to get that turned on. It's easy for you to do, but if you need any help, reach out to us, let us help you do that. Um, and then uh, sort of the, following the, the end of this process, when your awardees have connected their ORCID ID, what you'll see on every award details page is the name of the PI up here at the top and you'll see this little ORCID identifier that says they're connected and if you hover over that ORCID symbol it will tell you the trust level that they've given you. The other way to tell that they've given you the option to push the award to their ORCID record is this little checkbox. So we have both at the individual award level the option to check this box, push save, and it will send that uh, data over to, over to the ORCID record. I would encourage you to do this for awardees that have taken the time to connect their ORCID ID, give that trust level, go ahead and push that uh, award record back to them. Uh, we've also made it really easy, so there's a bulk process in there under update award status to let you just select all your awardees um, that have connected their work and record and pushed them all at once and, and Proposal Central will handle doing that. What happens when you do that, the awardee receives a confirmation email, right? So they get an email from ORCID that says, hey, your work and record was updated by your funder and here's the data on that. When they go into their record and they look at it, they'll see, oh, Proposal Central updated my award record or if you're a member organization and they've trusted you directly, that source will show as the name of your organization uh, who gave the funding. So this clearly is better for other people who are looking at the record to see that I got this award from the Children's Tumor Foundation. Uh, 
in Proposal Central also provides the data, but this is viewed by other funders as more valuable, right? They understand that you directly gave that. So that's one of the benefits of membership, but this option is available to you whether you're a member or not. It's just who, what shows up as the source. It does show the name of the grant maker in the record that's pushed. So no worries uh, as far as that goes. Um, and then sort of I'll finish this up to say this automated content, that is you pushing the award record in there, the institutions pushing the employment affiliation, those kinds of things are what make ORCID so powerful. So let's all do our part in pushing that data content back into the researcher's record and also encouraging them to add other content and, uh, and use it where they can. So what can you do right now? So four steps. First, get the ORCID in the application. If you're not already doing that, this is so easy to turn on and it's no burden on the, on the applicants. Just ask us to help you and we'll get that set up. Uh, the second thing is ask your awardees to link and authorize that, give, a, give you that trusted level. So again, we have standard email template. We have, uh, we, it's turning this on is really easy. You can put it in a progress report. You can put it in a separate step. This is simple, just reach out to us. We'll help you get this set up. We're trying to encourage more of this and more content and more ORCID connections in here so that we can give you the impact data. Uh, and then, you know, do your part, right? For the awardees who have done this, push those award records to their uh, ORCID um, records so that they can say, hey, this really worked and I didn't have to do the maintenance to keep that information up. Uh, and then the last one on here, is help us get the message out to your awardees. Encourage them to add content to their work, to their uh, ORCID record like publications and, uh, and other funding because that flows into the profile. You see them, it's the thing that you can use to demonstrate impact. It gives you all the analyst, uh, analysis tools. So help us help encourage them to add content. And then Sheila and I have put together these resources for you. Sheila's gonna email you afterwards with um, this presentation, all of these links. And I just say, don't hesitate. If you want some help in doing this, or you have more questions, you call the Proposal Central Help Desk and they will walk you through how to make this happen. And uh, we're, we're here for you. We really want this to work. We think this is a tremendous uh, infrastructure piece that will make research much more open and visible and, and impactful and insightful. So. Uh, Appreciate you taking the time to to uh, to listen, and then I think Sheila and I are going to turn our video on and take any questions. Yes, great. Thank you so much, Jamie. That was wonderful. Um, <clears throat> I haven't seen any questions come into the chat, but if anybody does have questions, oh, there we go. We got one. Um, so, if a grantee enters a publication via ORCID in their progress report. If the publication information, like status or journal, is updated in ORCID, will those updates be reflected in the progress report, or will the publication entered remain static? I think that's a question for you, Jamie. Yeah, that's a great question. So, if the uh, any of the data is updated in the ORCID record, publications, award data, things like that, we're pulling that updated data into Proposal Central directly. So we've got this process that sits behind the scenes and pulls that information in. The, the data that the researcher reported in one uh, progress report is uh, the snapshot of that data at the time they did that report. The next time that they do that progress report we're pulling in the updated data associated with that um, with that publication. So you'll get that updated data when you go to the next um, uh, reporting cycle. In our insights platform, because we're using the identifier, not the metadata itself, we're just using the identifier as the connection, we're always going to have the most current version of what that is from the publisher. So in the analytical platforms, what you're going to see is the updated, um, most current data about that. Did I answer the question? Yeah, you're welcome. I think it did, yes. Um, are there any other questions out there, either about ORCID in general or um, how it works in Proposal Central? 
Also, you can feel free to unmute if you'd rather speak your question um, if you don't want to type it in. Um, and, and while you are thinking of your questions, uh, I, I put this into the chat, but we will be sending out the follow-up email with the recording, the slides, you'll have access to all of the slides, um, and that list of resources that Jamie showed at the end, um, uh, as well as the blog post that I uh, shared earlier. So you'll have access to all of this information. So if questions do come up as you go, um, you know, for Proposal Central, definitely contact the help desk. But if any more general ORCID questions come up, you can also, you know, respond to me. I'll be the person sending the email. So you'll all have my email address. Um, I'll give it just a few more minutes to see if there are any other lingering questions out there. Everybody's shy today. Either that or we did a really good job, Sheila. <laughs> And also, this, this has been a lot of information, so it may take some time to sink in, and you may find yourself with questions later, which we will be available for you to answer those. So, um, All right, great. Well, I think uh, with that, we can go ahead and conclude. So thank you so much, everyone.